What I'd like to do is kind of go through briefly um, the, the whys and the hows of an upcoming workshop that I uh, am working on currently. And I want to try to get through as much as I can as briefly as possible so that I leave some time that we can discuss and I have some follow-up questions that I would like to pose to those who are attending today. Um, and just to try to get a little bit more dialogue and discussion going uh, around uh, what I'm going to talk about this, this online uh, workshop. As Vince mentioned, um, <clears throat> this is a face-to-face -face workshop that I'm planning with uh, colleagues that I work with uh, on a daily basis. And uh, I work at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes. This is a public university in Mexico, in Aguascalientes, Mexico. And um, I teach a lot of courses related to academic writing and research. And I uh, wanted to put together just a brief workshop with my colleagues um, because we have, although we have certain courses in the program that we teach, we teach, we have a BA program in English language teaching, we have specific courses that are directly related to academic writing. But beyond that, we have many courses where students are expected to write academic essays. So although this course uh, is not for all the teachers as far as in terms of uh, the courses that they teach, there are a lot of academic um, writing assignments that uh, students are expected to, uh, to complete throughout the BA. So, um, I, I wanted to kind of show you a little bit. Hopefully, my screen now is shared, and I am now showing you the first. This is the home page of the academic writing professional development uh, workshop that we have that I have set up here for for educators here. Now, this is specifically for English as a foreign language or English as a second language uh, educator, um, but there might be uh, you know, this might be of interest to anyone who's interested in, you know, pursuing um, academic writing or improving their own academic writing uh, skills. Uh, now, this the the reason, uh, another reason why I wanted to create this online workshop was to kind of look at it uh, in three different areas. The, the first area is I wanted to come up with a driving question an essential question for uh, the educators that would relate to their own teaching practice. So getting started in this, uh, this five-day workshop, I wanted teachers who are all in-service teachers, by the way, um, to look at a question that would pertain to their own challenge, some of the challenges that they're facing currently. So I wanted them to look at what type of issues they are currently facing because, as you know, any type of writing endeavor, you need to have a good topic, you need to have something worth writing. And for this particular context, I wanted to have a question that could possibly later lead to some sort of action research project. Uh, if they come up with a question that they are, are looking at how they can improve in a certain area, whether it be pedagogical or whether it be focused more on, on learning, that they come up with uh, uh, an idea, a concept, a topic that they can look at that they can help improve their own practice. So although this is a writing, academic writing you know, exercise, a workshop, uh, getting started, it was very important or it is important for, for, for us, the, for the attendees, to come up with a question that they can focus on throughout this workshop that they can write about, that they can research, that they can read the literature about and, and come up with a thesis statement that they can develop uh, an argument around uh, that links directly to this area of improvement. So that's one area, the one focus of this workshop. The second is, of course, looking at the mechanics of writing. So this is where we get into um, the, uh, you know, how we go about writing and, and academic writing, uh, rhetorical patterns and and how we go about developing ideas and premises and ideas and uh, how we go about doing the actual mechanics of, of the writing process. And the third area that I want to focus on throughout this five-day workshop all is related to pedagogy. So, and I'll show you some, some questions related to that, but throughout this workshop I also wanted to come up with questions that just relate to 
uh, pedagogy, specifically about teaching writing and also pedagogical just in general how how they approach certain uh, assessments and instructional processes that they relate to in their own teaching practice. So uh, those are the three kind of areas that I wish to uh, kind of uh, go after throughout this workshop. So it's not only about the mechanics of writing, but it also leads to this area of improvement and related pedagogy. So this main page here, uh, I've set up just some general information about the course. And one of the links here in this main page is called Outliner. And I'll open up that. And this is kind of another view, another way that uh, attendees can kind of look at some of the content that we'll be talking about throughout the five-day workshop. So um, basically, and I should say now that everything that you see here is subject to change. I'm still in the process of um, coming up, you know, and adding content. Uh, the course is scheduled to begin jo January 11th of uh, 2016, so we are uh, still about a week away or so, so I'm still adding and changing content. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, again, I'm open to feedback. If there's some things that either you feel are missing, feel free to, to reach out and uh, leave comments and let me know. be really appreciative of that. But here we have basically, uh, I have some of the content that we're going to be talking about here. And it's broken down into unity, coherency, cohesion, uh, some of the mechanics of writing, and feedback. Feedback mainly being pedagogical, looking at different forms of assessment, um, and uh, just how we go about giving feedback. So um, this is still a work in progress, but this is more or less uh, the information here that uh, I'm going to be you know, populating throughout and probably will be adding to throughout the workshop itself. So it's going to be uh, undergoing some changes as we, as we go through, but this is just another view. And it's not to try to make things confusing, but I want to give the attendees options of how they can access the content. There may be some that just want to view the wiki and they want to just you know, participate in the face-to-face -face sessions, and there will be others, I would assume, that may feel more comfortable with this type of view in, uh, in Digo, where they look at the content more as an outline. But either way, there's really there's no right or wrong way to, uh, to participate here. Really, the idea is that, that each individual attendee, each uh, person kind of chooses what, uh, what works for them. This is a five-day workshop, so uh, the day one, day three, and day five are face-to-face -face sessions. So we're going to be meeting two hours a day, um, and uh, well, it'll be on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then day two and day four, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there'll be an offline component uh, that where attendees will be expected to uh, complete some sort of task offline. And Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, uh, I, we're, I, I'm not able to see the outliner. It says it requires permission. But could you tell us more about that? What is it, it's obviously a Digo tool. How does that work? What does oh, it do? Oh, okay, sure. So you can't see the outline. It's uh, I can't. I don't know uh, if Maria or Gordon or Nadia can see. Joined us. Yeah, I, can you see it, Maria? You can see. Okay, when I open it, it says. Uh, uh, it says you need permission. It has a okay, um, I'll tell you what, you're trying to access it directly from the wiki, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right, so for now, maybe I'll just kind of go through it and discuss it a little bit just through the screen share, and then we can get together. If anyone cannot access academic, the academic writing outline, let me know, and I'll try to help you off you know, after the session. Okay. If that's and all right. What, what is it? What does it do? Yeah. Um, it's interesting, Digo, I, I kind of uh, left Digo alone for a while. I used to use it a lot as a bookmarking uh, source, you know, to to gather uh, bookmarks. And But they have come out, and I'm not sure when this happened, but they came out with a new feature called Outliner. And it's kind of a, a, a way to manipulate or organize your bookmarks. So before, 
it was kind of cumbersome to kind of organize in some sort of logical fashion all of your bookmarks once you had it in Digo. But now with Outliner, you can you can basically organize your information in an outline and nest you know your ideas and organize those into groups and subgroups and so on, just as, as, a, as a, an outline. And you also have the ability to annotate. If you can add comments to each one of the, the bookmarks. So it's kind of a in, more interactive way to kind of uh, use all of those, those bookmarks and organize them in a way that, in this case, um, in a way that I would maybe approach um, organizing the ideas based on concepts, not necessarily on the order in which we're going to discuss them, if that makes sense. The wiki, I'm basically organizing it chronologically, so I have day one, I have day two, day three, but in Outliner what I can do is I can organize all of the content based on concepts, which for me I think is uh, makes it a little bit easier. For example, I can organize information under Unity, I can organize information under Coherency and so on, and not have to organize it by time. I can discuss any of these concepts at any time, and that was the intention. So uh, Outliner basically is just a way to outline your bookmarks. Okay, and you've made these bookmarks, and I suppose you could have done it uh, in Digo or Delicious, the way it used to be done, by creating a Unity tag, uh, something particular to yourself, and pull them up that way. So this is actually yes. a visualization where you, you actually curate, you've become a curator now. Right. Uh, it's not just pulling through the folksonomy. It's, it was kind of designed Correct. at one point to do. Yeah. Yeah, and you can still use tags. You know, you can mm -hmm. still organize information that way if you're going, You know, if you like to use um, tags. I don't use tags that much, but uh, you still have that option with uh, Digo with Outliner. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, that's nice. I have to look into that. So this is great information to learn uh, new development with Digo. Which me too. I used to use Digo a lot. I used to use Delicious. A lot. Then uh, Delicious got taken over by Yahoo, and uh, it deteriorated. And then I moved everything over to Digo, but I don't really use it all that much anymore. I guess there are other curation tools. But anyway, yeah, that's that's a neat one. That's that's nice to know. All right. So um, yeah, and uh, please let me know if anyone is not able to access Outliner. And again, you can access Outliner from the main page by clicking here under uh, the Welcome thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving on uh, here, under navigation here, I'll go ahead and start uh, talking about each of the days now. And um, under day okay. one... Could I interrupt you for a second? Sure. Sorry, uh, Gordon here. Technical question. For those of us who can't access the outliner uh, due to permission, do you need to create an account with Digo in order to be able to access it? That's a good question, and... Um, I, I tell you what, I'm going to save, I'm going to create a shared link because I'm, I'm kind of new to Digo as far as Outliner and how this works. Um, I'm going to copy this into the chat. Uh, Vance, if you want to upload it to a uh, chat wing, uh, maybe let's see if that works. Um, I, I'm not sure if I can answer your question, Gordon, but certainly we'll look into this after the session and uh, we'll try to help anyone to try to get in. Uh, get into Outliner. Uh, I'm really not sure how that works. You may have to have an account, but let me, I'm going to close my screen share. Are you, are, aren't you on Chatwing? Well, I have Chatwing on my iPad. Oh, yeah. Say, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, because okay. I can't, uh, because I'm using Chrome, I can't copy from the text chat and put it into the chat wing. But I might um, be able to open it. I can open it. Uh, or, or okay. Maria, yeah. Would you like me to do anything? <laughs> yeah. Have, have you, are you able to copy from the uh, text chat in the Hangout? Okay. I'll tell you what. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. For some reason, uh, I lost the Hangout uh, window in Chrome. So uh, I'm going to just upload the link in Wiki. Under the welcoming screen, so okay. 
you're, you're fine here in the Hangout, by the way, as far as we know. Okay, it's weird. I did something with, I don't know, Windows 10 or Chrome or something. That mm -hmm. I'm having some problems. Okay, so I just say if you're looking at the wiki under uh, PBWorks, I just added a long link after the word outliner under the welcoming heading. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Perfect. I don't think that does, if it doesn't help, uh, we'll have to get together after the session and I'll see if I can find it, out. It works fine now. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Excellent. So what I'll do later on is I'll replace that link, that outliner link with, with that. So kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay. Great. Any other questions before I continue? I'm just waiting for that link to open, and it is opening fine for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, I'll go ahead and continue. If anyone has other uh, questions about the outline or, uh, you know, or comments, we can go back to that as well. Now, in day one, um, this is basically um, creating essential questions for, for, day, for day one, day three, and day five. So. Uh, the first day basically is again getting the attendees around this idea of coming up with a, a researchable problem so that they can develop a thesis statement that that seeks to address that researchable problem. So this was going back to what I mentioned earlier about uh, the importance of coming up or having the attendees come up with some sort of thesis statement that answers some sort of problem that they face, whether it, whether it be pedagogical or uh, based on learning and uh, so that there's some sort of relevance. They have some sort of reason for, for actually writing something. So that's what uh, day one really sets out to do, is to go out and try to find those concepts, that thesis statement that, um, that, they, that the attendees feel is worth uh, researching and, and learning and writing about. So that's basically day one. Day two, the idea here is to take that thesis statement and come up with what I refer to as the skeleton of, a, of an essay, which is what we're, what the attendees will be asked to complete, a five-paragraph essay, is looking at basically four key sentences. The thesis statement being one, and the three topic sentences that will make up the first sentence of each of their body paragraphs. So, They'll be asked to complete a five-paragraph essay. The first paragraph will be the introduction. The last will be the conclusion. And they'll have three body paragraphs. So uh, with my writing students that I, that I work with a lot, um, you know, the, one of the main problems is trying to get these four sentences right, trying to come up with a very good thesis statement that's coherent, that's clear, that's, that's not too general, that's not too specific, and then taking that next step and coming up with topic sentences that, again, are not too general or too specific that link directly to the thesis statement, right? So they're going to be asked to create some sort of an argumentative type of essay. So they are going to be asked to take a position and come up with claims as their uh, thesis statements and topic sentences. And um, that's what uh, day two sets out to do is ask the attendees to come up with these four key sentences. So once they get those four sentences, then they can proceed on to day three, where they will then uh, start looking at developing one of the three pair body paragraphs. And uh, we'll be talking about paragraph development, what that means, what that looks like, and, and looking at coherency and cohesion at the paragraph level. Day two kind of looks at coherency and cohesion based on the essay level, looking at those four sentences, making sure that they're that they're all aligned. So day three looks at the paragraph level. Day four, participants will be asked to complete the rest of their body paragraphs. And day five, we'll be looking at uh, actually the introduction and conclusion paragraphs. And so, you know, in a nutshell, briefly, those are the those are that's the content. That's the idea uh, behind uh, this five-day workshop. And you'll notice that on day one, day three, and day five, I've mentioned some teacher reflections that that uh, that I'm trying to that I want to include before I talk about the teacher reflections. So, are there any questions uh, over the content, the the way in which I'm presenting these five, the the content for each of these five days? 
Yeah, it looks quite clear. I'm able to go to the wiki. Uh, we put the uh, the link here in the with my wife, Bobby. We've uh, I've put the link in the text chat here as well as in Chatwing, and so anyone listening to this could uh, follow in Chatwing and click on the navigation at the top of the page for day one, two, three, and five and four, and uh, it seems to work just fine. Okay. So just for the sake of time, I don't, I'm not going to go over the, the activities specifically, but you should be able to see if you are if you are accessing the wiki, kind of look at the activity and see, um, you know, see what, what activity the participants will be doing. And, you know, one of the reasons I was kind of debating at the very beginning of the academic workshop about how to go about, um, you know, making this content available, and um, I've... I've Discussed with Vance in a prior session with the Learning Together, with the Learning Together community, um, my work with uh, Office 365 and, and how some of my students are using Office 365, and I was very much considering using that same uh, same platform before. But the problem with Office 365 mainly is that it is basically it's a, it's a uh, intranet setup. So I, there was no way for me to share all of this information with the public at large um, without them having to set up an account in Office 365, which would not be possible under uh, since it's 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 linked to the university. So that was one of the main reasons too. I wanted to use a wiki in this way so that this whole learning process was more transparent for all of the attendees that. Everything was made available uh, to anyone else who wished to participate. Others may wish to participate, they may or they may not, but I wanted to at least show the, the potential of having this information uh, be presented in this way so that, that they could see the, the value and hopefully interacting with, with others uh, beyond the, the institution. So uh, that was kind of main reason. Very, it's very much uh, similar to, to MOOC. I don't, I don't really want to go into whether or not this is a MOOC or not, but, um, but yeah, the idea is basically making the whole learning experience uh, transparent. Yeah, transparent and open. And while we're on that topic, I want to just put into the recording here, in case someone is listening, the, the address of that wiki. It's Academic Writing PD, just one word, run it all together, academicwritingpd.pbworks.com. So if people went there, just listening to the recording, they could uh, follow along what we're doing. Great. Thank you, uh, Vance. Um, now, before I go into teacher reflection, I wanted to discuss one more thing very quickly. And uh, this is kind of addressing the how of the workshop. And I created a shared uh, wiki of with links of all of the, the participants. Now, again, we haven't started, obviously, so there's nothing really to look at. And I'm just now looking at the links, and it's not taking me to it, so I'll have to look at that. But the idea here is that uh, each of the participants will be working on or working in uh, Word, Microsoft Word Online. And uh, they will, uh, obviously they could also use Google Docs uh, if they chose to. But the idea is to open up each of their work and provide links so that all the participants can see all of the, uh, the contributions of their, of their colleagues. So, so to make um, both the feedback that I provide, if I, if I provide feedback directly in the document, or if they want to provide feedback, they, they can do that as well. Um, but the idea here is throughout the whole writing process that all the participants have their own respective Word Online document or Google Docs document, and each document is shared uh, in this way so that uh, it can be viewable to others. So I wanted to make, mention that. Uh, I failed to mention that at the beginning. And again, this document can be accessed from the main page down here at the bottom where it says Share Documents page. And uh, this is where you can access those links. Of course, if you're participating, you I uh, could also add your link if anyone really, if wants to contribute to this wiki. Uh, send me an email and I'll give you rights to do so. I, this is, a, again, going to be as open as possible. So if anyone wants to 
uh, become a contributor to this particular wiki, uh, feel free to let me know. I might just interject here that we have a viewer online, someone in the stream, and we're chatting at uh, uh, chatwing.com slash V-A-N-C-E-S-T-E-V. So if you have any, if uh, anybody listening on the stream has any comments, uh, just make them there. And we'll see them and respond. <laughs> 